Hi, I'm Jeff Foster with Pro Video Coalition. I'm here with Stephen Wheatcraft. He's out in uh, uh, Reno, Nevada. Tell us about that. Uh, well, I was a professor at the University of uh, Hydrology, Geophysics and Hydrology for a very long time, about 30 years, and I retired a few years ago and got more and more serious about my photography. So that's, that's what great. led me to be here today, I guess you might say. That's great. And what's your background with, with all of this UAV technology? Well, uh, I got a start in RC helicopters a number of years ago, and I've been a semi-professional photographer for probably about 12 years. And the two didn't meet until these things came out, uh, you know, last year. They've been out a little bit longer than that. But once they met up and I saw I could fly a helicopter or a quadcopter or an octocopter and do serious photography, uh, that's when I really got into it. I like to refer to it as my 400-foot high tripod. And so it gives you a chance to do landscape nature photography from a perspective that no one's ever seen before. So it, it's, it really opens up the third dimension. So Steve, tell us about uh, the S1000. And uh, this is kind of in its transporting Tra mode. Transporting mode. Yeah, That's so correct. tell us yes. about that. Well, the S1000 is an octocopter. It's made by DJI. Um, I guess it would be referred to as the top of the line model. And as an octocopter, it's got eight arms, and it's very transportable because of the fact that the arms uh, essentially collapse down and it, it takes up the space that's about the size of a, a wastebasket. It's got a built-in GPS so that it self-stabilizes. It hands off the sticks, and it'll just stay plus or minus about half a meter uh, right where it's at. And, um, uh, it will, if it loses contact with the transmitter, it will return to home. That is, when the copter takes off, it records a home position and GPS coordinates. And so at any point, if it loses contact with the transmitter or if, or if you just lose sight of it and you're disoriented, um, you can tell it to go home and it'll come right back and actually land itself. All right, well, let's see you um, uh, set this thing up and uh, what you would do from this point. Let's see uh, what it takes to actually set it up and get it ready for flight. Sure. Um, usually the first thing I do is pull up the, this uh, antenna as the GPS antenna, get it up and get it out of my way. Um, and then I bring all the arms up. The arms rotate up and lock into position with these red clips. There's a nice little solid click that you feel so that you know that they're solidly clicked in. Okay, so we've got those and then the, uh, the rotor stays have to come off. That's kind of important. The unique thing about this copter is that uh, you don't really have to position the rotors. As soon as you start the motors, they just uh, spin into the correct position. So at this point, we're ready to, I like to get the camera going before I um, arm the, the copter just for safety purposes. So I'm going to actually start the camera. The camera can be in two modes. <clears throat> you can set it so that it's, you start video on the ground and it just records video throughout the whole flight. And then at any time during the flight, you can take stills. Um, the other mode of doing it is that you don't record video and you can just record stills at any time you want to. So I'm going to set it up so it's recording video and allowing me to take stills anytime I feel like it. <clears throat> um, I've set the camera up so that it's in uh, shutter priority. I set the shutter at 1 500th of a second, which I think is enough to stop motion, but still uh, uh, give me uh, plenty of light. Uh, and then the, the uh, aperture will set itself according to the camera's own sensors. Um, I've, I've preset the focus ring to infinity, to true infinity, and then if you notice, there's some red tape on the lens, and I've taped it into position so that it can't get unfocused. So it's set to manual focus then, in other words. So that's a 24 mil. So 24 millimeter lens, 2.8 uh, for the aperture. Uh, it's not one of Canon's best lenses, but the gimbal that this is on is specific to this camera and to that lens. Even if you, if you even put a filter on it, it will cause it to tip and lose balance. Uh, so it's very sensitive to that sort of thing. The batteries are two 10,000 milliamp lithium polymer or LiPo batteries that go on a little battery tray. There's Velcro between the battery tray and the, and the batteries and then a Velcro uh, strap on it. 
and it goes in on this side. I don't know if the microphone will pick it up, but there's a really solid click that happens, which you have to have this, this aluminum clip under here. It has to clip into place. Otherwise, um, there would be a pretty good danger of these batteries just slipping out into, in flight, which would not be a good thing. So we're in position now. Um, first thing we do is turn on the transmitter, the radio transmitter. Check all the switches to make sure they're in the right position. When I arm the copter, you will see an LED flash and you'll also see the gimbal with the camera rotating around and moving into its proper position and, and doing a self-check. So the LED that you see on the side of the uh, copter is essentially communicating some messages to us. Um, right now it's blinking a, a purple and three reds and it'll go from three reds to two to one to none. And once it gets so there are no reds and just a purple blinking LED, it tells us that um, the GPS is locked on and it's ready to go. Okay, I've set the camera so it's recording. So we're ready to take off. Okay, starting motors. First thing I do is I do a little ground test to make sure that the motors are responding. I tip it. Looks good. So now we're ready to take off. Now once I get it aloft, I just check its movements. Okay, now I'm going to put the gear up, watch the gear go up, and we're ready to go. The on-screen display shows the battery voltage, which is currently at 23.8, and uh, we can go down to about 21. We need to be landed by the time it gets to 21. And it shows position, orientation, distance, and height away from the, um, the, the starting point. Okay, so I, I'd like to talk about what I like to call the Zen modes. It's the different modes the Zen use uh, gi gimbal operate. Okay, so there's three modes of operation for the, the Zen Muse gimbal. Uh, the, the first one is called FPV or first person view. Um, so it's like when you're using goggles or when you're using the monitor. Um, and so you really want the, uh, the camera to be pointing in the forward direction. So you can see if I rotate the craft. It, the 
camera maintains the forward direction. The second one is called free, and in the free mode, I use two levers on the transmitter to control the pan. See how the camera is just rotating or panning? I can pan it the other direction. And I can be panning this and rotating the copter completely independently. So you won't even notice that the copter is rotating, it's just the camera panning. And you can control both pan and tilt. So I can tilt the camera down or just a little past horizontal. Okay, so the next mode is called the limit mode. And let's say, for instance, that you wanted to film from the back of the camera, but always keep pointing towards the back of the camera. Well, in the limit mode, I can rotate the camera so that it's pointing backwards. And I can leave it pointing backwards. And now, even though I'm rotating the copter, it stays pointing backwards. Those are the three modes. And if you ever get a little bit disoriented, you can always put it back in the first person view mode, the FPV mode, and then you know you're pointing forwards. Now we're going to put the gear down. <laughs> 